CAA tells me. Uh, it's a four-year extension, essentially. Four years, $190 million. He'll have a $35 million salary this year. Then the extension kicks in. I'm told he'll have a player option before that 2024-25 season. But this is a, a, a huge signing a commitment for the Clippers, who obviously traded a great deal of assets to Oklahoma City to get Paul George, to get the Kawhi Leonard commitment. And now they have Paul George locked down long term with the Clippers. All right, so Woj, that leads me to the second half of that. You'd mentioned the duo with Kawhi. You've got Paul George locked up. What does this now mean for Kawhi and his future in Los Angeles? Well, Kawhi Leonard can't sign an extension until after this coming season, but these are two players who wanted to play together, uh, who certainly know they have more work to do with the Clippers uh, to, to try to win a championship, but you know they continue to be committed to each other, to that Clipper organization, and you know Paul George for for LA. He was ultimately the key to getting Kawhi Leonard, uh, getting that trade with Oklahoma City, and you know it's pretty remarkable when you think it was just six years ago. Uh, Paul George had that devastating leg injury in Las Vegas with Team USA. People wondered would he be an elite player again. And not only that, he has signed now his second long-term extension here in recent years. Uh, four years, $190 million on this extension. Overall, five years, nearly $226 million, Matt. Well, just, as you know, in the NBA, it is about your superstar duos. And right now, the Clippers are in a very good position, locked up with their superstars. The Clippers over the preseason tomorrow night against the Lakers. Woj, thanks for hopping off with us. Good stuff. So uh, Paul George has certainly been one of the league's best in recent years, one of five players to average 20 points, five rebounds per game in all five seasons since 2015 and 2016. A list that also includes Anthony Davis and LeBron James, who together just won a championship. And of course, James Harden, who right now is TBD. Ward Janowski did so, letting us know that Paul George is going to be a clipper for the foreseeable future. PG signed a four-year extension, guarantee him as much as $226 million over the next five years. The new deal keeps the 30-year-old George in his native Southern California. It obviously will serve as a catalyst, along with Kawhi Leonard, to commit to a new deal. So they've got their duo in L.A. One might argue that PG3's point prowess alone, three-point prowess rather, alone is worth the max extension money. One of seven players to knock down at least 1,000 threes over the last five seasons. Others include James Harden, Damian Lillard, and Steph Curry. Now, Giannis Atetokounmpo. It's been a long journey and I gotta keep getting better. I wanna be a champion. I just gotta keep working hard. Million dollar question in Milwaukee looming over the NBA that only Giannis Antetokounmpo has the answer to. And the Greek freak didn't shed any light on his long-term future. He's leaving it to his agent and has until December 21st to sign the five-year $228 million Supermax extension with Milwaukee. What does his future hold? We all want to know. Here's Giannis and his thoughts on the situation. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to focus on that, and um, not that I don't care about it. Obviously, I care about it. It's a very big decision uh, in my life, probably one of the biggest decisions I've going to make. But uh, I just let my agent to focus on that, and I'm going to focus in like getting ready inside of the day to play the first preseason game. I mean, it really is smart. Push all the attention to the agent. Let them handle it. Let's get more perspective from our <laughs> NBA reporter Malika Andrews. And Malika, what more can you tell us about how Giannis is approaching this season? Well, you just heard, Matt, he really does want his agent, Alex Saratsis, in the Bucks front office to be handling the ins and outs of this decision. Because remember, this is a new space for him. But what I heard him repeat, the sentiment I heard over and over again, is something that I've heard in the last two plus years of covering Giannis. And that is, at the end of the day, this is a man that is focused on winning. As long as he sees a path to do that, we already know he loves Milwaukee. But what he said yesterday is he is not playing to come in second, to come in fifth to have a second round exit like they did in the playoffs last year. He is hungry, he is focused, and he wants to win. And what he's hoping to be able to do to the degree that it is possible is to not have that the, the, the contract kind of fade into the background a little bit. That may be a tougher task than
than he intends it to be because all eyes around the league are watching what Giannis is doing. And I've talked to folks within the organization who said that they can feel it in practice. They see it when they walk by the TVs. They know that the pressure is on right now. Yeah, and all questions from the media are going to be about the contract. And the Bucks typically have a great mm -hmm. regular season and fall during the playoffs. So we'll see how that manifests itself coming to the regular season. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant and the Nets, they're going to play the Wizards in their first preseason game on Sunday. Durant spoke to the media on Wednesday, and he was asked about those trade rumors involving his former teammate, James Harden. We all know all these James Harden rumors are out there. Uh, have, and he's been your teammate in the past. Uh, what do you think about him and what he might bring if they were to trade for him? Uh, I don't think about James Harden at all. I mean, um, he doesn't play on our team. All right, so Malika, just body language in general, it's clear Durant was not interested in discussing Harden's future. What more can you tell us about the Nets' plan for KD in the preseason? Well, Kevin Durant was actually saved for that question pretty chipper yesterday. He said that he has been told by Steve Nash to actually expect to play some minutes at center when they're going with a small ball lineup, as well as he's going to be expected to bring the ball up the court at times. And from talking to DeAndre Jordan, from talking to Karis LeVert, I have heard over and over again that his teammates, the ones who've been playing around him over the summer and now in training camp, they swear that pre-injury Kevin Durant is back. Now, Kevin is saying, hang on, I don't want to proclaim that I am back to where I was before I play in an actual game. He says he's not sure yet exactly how many minutes he's going to be playing in the preseason, but his focus is to figure out how many minutes can I push my body to, to still be feeling as good as I'm feeling right now. He said the last year was good to assimilate with the team, and now he's ready to play and show people what he's been working on behind the scenes. And Malik, with an injury like the Achilles, we all know for the athlete, it's about trusting that it's going to take care of itself once you mm. get into a competitive situation. Durant's going to face his former team, yeah. the Warriors, on December 22nd. Season opener for them. Malika Andrews with the latest. Malika, thank you. Still ahead on Sports Center with James Harden back in Houston. What hurdles remain for the Beard to join the team in training camp? We'll have that coming up ahead. All right, back to the NFL. Rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts will make his first career start on Sunday as Carson Wentz has been benched. The 10 and 2 Saints visit the 3 8 and 1 Eagles, and Hurts will have to go up against the top defense in the league. In fact, the Saints have only allowed.